and welcome to this Serotizit Insight. I hope that everyone who attended our two-time portion of the show has now joined in again. And who knows, maybe we'll have some viewers who came especially and only for this insight. In any case, you have all come to the right place because this insight is about nothing less than the revolution in machining. Of course, we are talking about high dynamic turning and the free turn tools of Serotizit. And for this topic, we have two experts here at Serotizit, Brian Lawrenson and Patrick Zobel. Hello, Hello Harold. So earlier in Serotizit, it's tool time, they gave our viewers a very exciting preview and promised deep insights into high dynamic turning with the free turn tools. But before I leave the stage and let you begin, I have an important hint for all our participants online. If you have any questions during our show or are interested in any specific detail, please use the live chat function here on this website. The chat area is on your right hand side. Write your questions or comments there spontaneously and receive answers from our experts who are located here in the editorial office within a very short time. I hope you have fun. Let's go. Hello everyone. My name is Brian Lorenzen. On my side is my colleague Patrick Zobel. Hello Brian. Today's topic is high dynamic turning with free turn tools. Thank you so much for your participation today. We are going to share our incredible new technological development with you, which we are certain will revolutionize the turning industry. Today, we're going to show you here, directly in front of the machine, uh, how to use FreeTurn. We will also discuss the advantages of working with FreeTurn and even show some very practical examples, even including the programming. However, to begin, for those of you who may not be familiar with high dynamic turning with free turn tools, we're going to give a brief introduction about what this technology actually is. Patrick, take it away. Thank you, Brian. In conventional turning, we typically talk about the XZ level. High dynamic turning moves it to the YZ level. Free turn tools use the Y axis and the milling spindle to create high dynamic turning. This video will show you how does it work. The tool in this case has an HSKT connection and is clamped in controllable milling spindle. The center of the insert and the rotation axis of the spindle are in line. This is what gives us a tremendous amount of flexibility. We are free to change the approach angle at any time either before or even during the process. Let's talk about machines for a second. When speaking about high dynamic turning, HDT for short, we typically speak about machines called multitask. A multitask machine is an all-in-one solution to complete a part in a single setup. Equipped with automatic tool change, these machines are ready for a highly automated production. Today, in our technical center, we have a DMG Mori CTX Beta 1250TC4A. With free turn, you can use the full potential of the machine to significantly improve your turning process, getting more productivity out of your machine. Let's take a look at how free turn tools utilize the full capabilities and benefits of this type of machine. Free turn is extremely flexible because the angle can be changed during the cut, so you can use the tool as you need it. You can use it as a left hand tool or as a right hand tool. You can use it before spindle center or even behind. You're completely free. You can use one tool for roughing and for finishing. It's all just a quick adjustment of the spindle. This flexibility results in a reduction of tools needed, which means less tool changes, less downtime, more positions left in your tool magazine, an overall increase in productivity to your process. In addition to flexibility, free turn tools are very stable, very strong. As you can hear, here see on the example, the tools are on, all in monoblock design. With this design, the main cutting forces are directed straight into the milling spindle, instead of bending the tool with conventional tooling. This can be seen on the blue arrow. As a result, the cutting process is highly stable with very low vibrations, resulting in a great surface finish. Another benefit I'd like to talk about is chip control. The ability to adjust the approach angle during the cut gives you the possibility to ensure really an optimal chip during your cutting process. Here you can see how it works. 
the pictures are taken on the same bar with the same feed rate and the same cutting speed. Just by changing the approach angle, we receive three totally different chip shapes. Okay, enough theory for the moment. Let's take a look into the machine and make some chips with free turn. Now I would like to introduce to you Michael Eigeier. He's our operator for today. Michael, please. Okay. This part we are going to machine is made from the steel 42 chrome mo 4. We start with face turning of the component. The following first three cuts on the outer diameter, we are changing the approach angle kappa for each cut. The first cut in this case has an approach angle of 80 degree. On the slow motion camera now, you can see very clearly how the chips are forming. With the second cut, we use an approach angle of 60 degree. Again, in the slow motion camera, you see very well how the chips are forming. For the third cut now, we are using an approach angle of 40 degree. All those three cuts are performed before the spindle center. So while you were looking at the video, we took some of the chips out of the machine. Let us take a closer look here on the table. Simply by adjusting the approach angle, we were able to generate completely different chips. The ability to so simply change the cutting angle was not possible in conventional turning. What is the benefit out of this? You will achieve a much higher reliability in your machining process using free turn. But we are not finished with this component. Michael, can you please continue? We go on with static roughing of the first pocket. These cuts are performed behind spindle center. We go on with the second pocket and we are doing dynamic roughing. These cuts are again performed before spindle center without changing the tool, demonstrating you how flexible the system is. Have you noticed the change in the spindle direction? So finally, let's do some finishing. The tool in this case is following the outline of the component. Now the part is finished. 
We saw free turn machining before and after spindle center. We saw static and dynamic roughing and finally profile turning. We finished the whole profile in one cut. On all those processes, we had very good chip control, especially in the profile cut. All of this using one single tool. To show you the difference, we prepared the finishing cut with conventional tooling. Michael, please start. So. With conventional tooling, we need at least two different tools, a left-hand tool and a right-hand tool. We start, in this case, with the left-hand tool to machine most of the profile. Then we are going to have a tool change to the right-hand tool. With this holder, we finish the 90-degree corner and the radius. Summarize the conventional machining, two holders are required, the chip control is not that good and we have a higher cycle time, time, mainly because of the necessary tool change between the tools. And free turn elimin eliminates this completely. Now that we've seen some of the advantages of HGT with free turn tools, let's talk about programming. Today we would like to discuss three different programming options available to you. The first one is manual programming. The second one is machine cycles. And the third one, finally, we'll talk about is CAD CAM software. Let's start with manual programming. Programming directly on the NC control of your machine. The toolpath is written in DIN ISO code or G code, and the dynamic movement synchronous actions are used. On the screen of the machine, you see an example. The program is done similarly to a standard program. Of course, with some extra commands like a rot to rotate the coordinate system. For this programming option, we have created a very useful tool. We call it our cutting angle compass. So this compass helps you to navigate through the, the programming process to always find the right orientation of the tool. So if you're interested in and you would like to try it, please ask your Ceratisit contact to get one. The second option, certainly a more comfortable way to work with Freeturn, are so-called machine cycles. DMG Mori offers such a cycle with its own technology called Freeturn cycle. Within the cycle, the Freeturn tools are predefined. You can choose one out of four insert geometries that are available. And with the cycle, you are completely free to change the approach angle for every program sequence. So, and the toolpath itself is defined in DNISO code or G code as, uh, as with the manual programming before. So, here you see an example on the machine control. On the top, you see the free turn tool data as one part of the cycle. Some lines below, you see the second part of the cycle with edge selection and tool orientation for the next program sequence, followed by the tool pass in DINISO. Again, this cycle is a very user-friendly way to work with Freeturn. The cycle is available, as mentioned, for DMG Mori machines type CTX and NTX with Siemens control. A new possibility to work with a machine cycle was recently introduced from the company Heidenhain with its CNC Pilot 640. The cycle is very easy and it offers full high dynamic turning for roughing and finishing. The programming is direct done directly on the machine control in the well-known programming environment of Heidenhain. So in fact, for the machine operator, there's no difference if programming free turn or conventional turning. It's all the same. The control, in addition, offers also automatic collision avoidance and a 3D simulation of the, of the turning process. So it's, it's very comfortable. On the screen now, you see some dialog windows 
and simu simulations in the typical Heidenhain style. In these dialogues, next to feed and cutting speed, you define the toolpath with parameters. Finally, you can check the program using the included simulation. So. For our third and final programming option, CAD CAM software, we would like to bring in a special guest. Allow me to introduce our colleague, Robert Douglas, from the company OpenMind. Robert will demonstrate the CAD CAM software Hypermill. He's going to present how Hypermill can be used to program high dynamic turning application with free turn tools. So, Robert is going to present to us with his Hypermill solution. Robert, please come on in and show us what your software can do. Hello, Brian. Hi. Thanks. Hello, Robert. Hello, Patrick. Okay, nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you also. Probably before we go into the tough programming work, probably you give us some words how OpenMind, the company, noticed Freeturn, the tool. So. Yes, we noticed three turns by an invitation of your R&D development uh, uh, company in Reute, in Austria. So they invited us uh, two years ago to have a look at this new technology you developed in uh, turning uh, tools. And uh, we had a look and we saw it and we saw the potential and we've been thrilled uh, to be a part of this. So since that time we are starting the development and the project uh, for the free turn support so. of our software. So, and today you will show us what you have developed within this time, within the last two years, to work with Freeturn. Yes, exactly. We have a laptop here now, so I will open it. And we prepared some of this stuff and we can now go on our screen for the audience to have a look at what we are doing. Okay, we are now straight on my laptop, so we can see uh, everything I have here. We see our part on the screen. And I'd like to give you a step-by-step -step introduction. So we start looking at a tool. We will look at a simple cycle. We will look at a more complex cycle. And also then we are looking on the finishing to give the audience an uh, in-view about how the programming works and how it is. So let's start with the tool. Here in our tool database, we have now the possibility to bring all the typical free turn tools and shapes into our database. An important part here in this tool database is the cutting point setup where we can set up the tool for different purpose, which is one, we can use it in the high dynamic mode and also we can use it in the static mode for using it as a normal turning tool where it appears. So that is the combination of both technologies in our tool database. And I'm showing you now the first cycle, which is a simple cycle that we have developed so you can see what is possible. So I have now here a simple geometric profile on the screen. And I have what we called here sync lines that we are used in the cycle for giving the tool the right angle. So let's have a look how the cycle works and how it looks. First of all, here you see the tool and the angle that we are using. On the second page, you have the information about on what part and what area we are working on that part. So it's really simple and straightforward. This is an outside. We turn to the left we give the user here the ability to define clearance and also some safe distance. And now we come to the important part. Here it shows you the ability of using a synchron line and the number of synchron lines we are used in that part. On the last part we are going more for the retract how we approach and how we drive off the part. So let's have a look how this cycle looks when we do a simple simulation. Now we show a simple simulation of that one and we see how the turning tool arrives here, use this area here static and on the end it starts from transition from this angle to this angle to be in the position to retract safe. Okay. 
Robert, now you showed us how to create a simple tool pass. Yes. But is it possible to change them? And, and, and if yes, how do I do it? Yes, that is a really good question, but because that is really simple and easy. Changing a tool pass is really a piece of cake. So you just have to click, for instance, on that one. You use a command where you say, OK, I would like to move it. I say, I like to move it from that part. Move it to this area. So now my transition starts earlier than before. So I go on the cycle. I just calculate the cycle. Then you can do the simulation again. Then I can do the simulation again. And you see it reflects already in the toolpath. Now let's do the uh, simulation again. And let's do it a little bit slower that the viewers also can see what we are doing. We can drag this around so we don't have okay. to play it always. So by dragging it, now you see when we reach this position, now the transition starts. So the user do not every time has to redefine the whole process. It can easily be adapted just by changing the position or changing the angle. So that means if the angle here is not appropriate, we can easily turn that over, change it, just recalculate, and the job of the programmer in that case is done already. OK, thank you. Now I think we go to the next cycle, which is the okay. roughing cycle, where we use our max turning technology to rough the area on the screen, which is a, a typical hard to uh, machine area because okay. you need to have more tools in a normal turning process. OK, and now you're showing us how to do it with just one free turn tool. Exactly. Exactly. Good, so please go on. OK, so we switch off the layers that we have here. So I switch on the other ones. And we output that one. So this is the cycle we already calculated. So let's have a look at the cycle if we see that the difference. So all the user interface is all the same over all the cycles. Some typical variations in it, but the build up and the setup is always the same. So you follow the rule, you start here, you have your turning tool, which we like to use. You have your profile selected. So as we see here, we have used the setup for an offset profile. So we want to leave material on the part for the finishing process. We also have here the strategy. It's also outside safe areas and approach models. And here also, as you see here, we have synchron lines. What you notice now on the screen, Patrick, here we have only two lines that are defining our angles, okay. which will guide the tool for the machining. And so the rest of the machining, uh, the rest of the cuts are defined automatically? These are done automatically, and we are using our high performance strategy which is called max turning, mm -hmm. which is a cycle that really uh, is developed for uh, high speed cutting, okay. uh, which also have some unique features in it to be really smooth in the cutting and in, in the process the tool is handled. Can you explain us a little bit in detail what are the, what is the unique on the max turning cycles? Sure. What are the advantages? Yeah. The advantage is here that the cycle always look for not overlooking and overloading the tool. When we zoom in here, you notice a little bit here these approach angles here. On a typical turning, we always retract in a 45 degree angle and approach again. Okay. Our max turning cycle here use a completely different method to have a safe and soft approach into the material, okay. which is a benefit for the cutting edge. And also, the creation of the tool pass, then it's much faster. Okay. So we can uh, uh, use much higher feed rates because we have a safe approach and a soft approach into it yeah. and not a push into the material, which will make a real big difference in the cutting then when okay. we see it on the machine cutting. So summarized, it is really a smooth technology to, to have smooth cuts on the, on the path. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I would suggest we go into uh, machine simulation to have a look on how the material now is removed. So you will see now this soft entrance here. And as you see, the tool has 
on the beginning the angle we have chosen here and now I make it a little bit faster and it automatically tran the transition is automatically to the other side and here the soft entrance also on the end which you see here in in these corners or for instance on that corner now it is always soft and the benefit is our cutting edges will be maintained and can work much longer okay. on Very cutting good. in that part. So this is a really nice technology and we can speed it up a little bit more. So as we see here, it moves also zigzag. Most of the cycles in the machines are working in one direction. Mm -hmm. And we have also the time benefit then when we move zigzag. We save a lot of time because we do not uh, use so much fresh air cutting as yeah. we uh, call it. This is a real benefit for the user as well. So the cutting time is optimized and it is the sh maximum shortest time yeah. how to remove the material. Yeah. And if I see it right, we use the left hand edge and the right hand edge. So this is a benefit for the tool life at all. Exactly, because then the tool wear is you not only have to uh, change your insert because your left edge is gone. Yeah. It's also always used left to right side, so it is a optimized yeah. usage. And from my point of view, it's also a benefit because you can use it much longer, yeah. double the time yeah. normally. Okay, now we are going to the finishing cycle to show you what is possible on a complex uh, finishing uh, cycle profile. And as you see here, Patrick, we also have all those lines now okay. on uh, the screen. These lines are also used for the angle. So let's have a look on the cycle, how it behaves when he finish that profile. So you see it starts here, it follows that profile, it turns over. It always, the engineer who's cutting that profile has the freedom to use the best approach angle on his given profile to be able to get the best cutting results as you have shown on the chips before. So he's able to really drive his approach angle to the point where he needs it. Yeah. He's, he's changing the angle with the sink lines you mentioned. And is he free to add a free number of sink lines or is this limited? No, there is no limit. It is the same working process that we have uh, seen on the first cycle, which With was a simple, simple pass, one. Yeah. It okay. is here the same process. If you want to change an angle, you change the angle, you move the, uh, you can add lines. Can so I show, I show you in the, in the software here, yeah, when you go to the, to the sync lines, now we have used nine lines. Yes. So whenever you like to edit, you can have a new selection or you can have an edit section. Okay. That means, so if you, if you see, okay, there's a need to change the angle again, mm -hmm. you just put a line in that place, bring it into the calculation, calculate the cycle, and here we, we go and we have the new angle in the cycle okay. and it's automatically uh, used for the calculation and for the tool pass. Okay. So that is the complete process. At the end, I would say we can start, before we go to the machine, a complete simulation. Well, very good. That we very nice. see what yeah. we have done in our complete program. So we start the simulation. I now change it so it, it looks more what people on a turning machine uh, would like to see. And we start the simulation. So we did all the cuts here that we have okay. seen in your videos. And here we see how he's turning. Here now we see also multiple so we have okay. statics we have dynamic high roughing, dynamics yeah. and now we we think this is called what well, we use high dynamics because we are yeah. doing the max turning with yeah. the high dynamic tool which yeah. is able to use high dynamics yeah. so it's the perfect combination from our side also yeah. using that tool technology and this dynamic cutting method yeah. to cut parts like this so we can okay. also speed it up a little bit and this is what you can see before you go on a machine. You can verify everything. In the end, we will see there will be a notice. OK. 
okay. that we have uh, uh, no collisions in our part. It is safe okay. to bring the part to the machine. So okay, and we've done everything. Finishing. That's the finishing now. So we see, okay, we have removed all the material. Here is the check. Okay, so this, this mean, now the simulation for me, it looks fine. Yes. So are you satisfied with the simulation in most? Yes, I am satisfied. Okay. I think that, that's what we can do. Now we go yeah. for getting our program ready to machine. So we do a post run. To get our NC code. To get I our guess, NC yeah. code and to okay. be ready to bring it on the machine. So you can use one or you can use the whole package. So now I just have to click on generate NC file. Now you see he tells me that is the one. So I can also double click here and then I can direct here straight go to the my program and put it on an ES USB drive. I can uh, put it on a network drive so we can access it directly from the machine. Oh, we are ready to go. Okay. Thank you, Robert, for showing us how easy it is in Hypermill to program Freeturn. Thank you, Patrick, for having me here on the stage. You're welcome. Thank you. So, Robert is now leaving the stage and now we're going to run the part. Robert showed us the programming. We run it directly on the machine. So, as you see, Michael is back on the machine and he starts. We start with face turning using the cutting edge number one. Then we move on with cutting edge number two for straight turning of the outer diameter. We start the cut as we have seen before in the programming of robot with static moving of the edge and at the end we are changing the approach angle from flat to 90 degree. We go on with machining the front diameter. First cut static to pre-machine the chamfer, you see now. To go on with dynamic roughing of the front diameter. You see here, very nice, the movement of the tool. Again, we start with a flat approach to go on and make a 90 degree shoulder. Now we go on with the dynamic roughing of the pocket using edge number three. On the screen you may have noticed the graph of Toolscope, the digital process monitoring system. The graph shows the torque on the spindle. What you see now on the screen or on the, on, the, um, on the machining is the nice movement of the tool as we have described it before with the max turning cycle uh, in Hypermill. So at the corner of the cut we have really a nice a smooth entrance to the component. And then we are turning from the left hand tool to right hand tool, use both sides of the edge to yeah, finally to have also a good tool life with free term. Okay, the main 
roughing job is done. Now we go to cut out the pockets in between. To clean out the corners. Again, roughing one more pocket. So finally, we do the finishing of the front diameter, inclu including a clearance or an undercut. Then we do finishing of the profile, the whole profile in just one cut. Again, you see the nice movement of the tool, as we showed before in the machine, in the simulation in Hypermill. So. Okay, now the part is finished. Michael on the machine will now measure the diameter in front to do a correction of one millimeter. Okay. Okay. Now the diameter Michael measured is 49.64. Now Michael is going to do a correction in the machine and we machine again and machine and measure again the stud. Okay, Michael will now again measure the part with the finished diameter so can you tell me please diameter, what's the diameter diameter 4865 so now we have diameter 4865 what is more or less exactly the one millimeter less than before so you see with free turn we can also um, do a wear compensation um, dimension compensation as with typical other tools so no problem Okay, after some machining, we say we welcome back Brian to our machine. So, hello Brian. Hi Patrick, thank you very much. So we have now just talked about three different programming alternatives you have for free turn. Patrick, what is your preferred way? I think there's not one preferred solution. The, the best option for you as the user of free turn is always depending on your environment and your production. So now that we've talked about the programming options, the next thing we're going to discuss is a success story, an actual use case where Freeturn was utilized in the manufacturing of a rebore tool. We have here the rebore tool right in front of us. Uh, this part was manufactured using Freeturn and has been an incredible success. We're going to look in detail at the information regarding this particular manufacturing process. During roughing of this Part, we pushed the cutting speed by 77% to 0.48 millimeters per revolution. This was possible by using the relatively flat approach angle of 30 to 60 degree. The chip removal rate was almost doubled to more than 400 cubic centimeter per minute. So on finishing with the very effective coolant supply we could increase the cutting speed to 400 meters per minute, was quite high. The big advantage gained on this point was the ability with free turn to machine the whole profile in just one cut. 
So without interruption, this saved us a lot of time. To give you an overview, in total, the number of turning tools could be reduced from three to one. The machining time was reduced by 46% to two minutes, uh, 2.7 minutes, as well as the costs was decreased by 46%. And we saved a lot of energy. In my opinion, this execution could easily be called a major success. Wow, Patrick, what a major improvement. This is uh, really demonstrating well how a production process can be improved by implementing high dynamic turning with free turn tools. If you'd like to read some more details and see an incredibly cool image video about this particular success story, please check out our website, cuttingtools.seratizit.com. There you can find even more details about this particular execution. So Patrick, can we achieve this type of success in all applications? Every application is different. What I'm sure about is, with Freeturn, we can improve your production process. So test us out and send us your request for Freeturn. Contact your Seratisit representative or send us an email, freeturn at seratisit.com. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the product range itself. Freeturn is not the future of turning, it's the present, it's the now. Uh, right now, we're currently offering four different inserts for machining steel, stainless steel, non-ferrous material. Uh, the tool holders are available in HSKT as well as PSC connections. Everything on stock and available immediately. Test out the potential improvement to your production and join the free turn revolution. Thanks a lot, Brian. And many thanks also to all other people involved, whom I would like to ask here once again before the camera. Thanks to Patrick Zobel uh, for the detailed insights into high dynamic turning and the free turn tools, of course. And thanks to Robert Douglas introducing free turn to Hypermill. And last but not least, thanks to our operator, Michael Allgaier, who had such a good handle on the machine. And many thanks also to all interested professionals on your computers and mobile devices who followed us here and asked their questions in the live chat. We hope that we were able to answer them directly and live. For further questions, we will provide the requested information later. So should you have any questions for our experts after this insight, please use the contact form here on this platform. The contact person of your choice will then get in touch with you as soon as possible. I wish you a pleasant day and I'm really looking forward to seeing you again when it's time to say, Sarah it, it's tool time. Until then, stay healthy and take care.